So you're all here for the talk, the Web's Wayward Sisters, Performance, Security, and Accessibility. Um, how many people here love Shakespeare? Uh, <laughs> it was uh, an unusual, I decided to go off and to, to run, run with this as the subject of the talk, but I wasn't sure how much uh, the, uh, the line of, of uh, a Shakespeare uh, theme would actually attract people or not. But we'll just let some people settle in. So I want to uh, first of all go off and, and uh, thank uh, Open Plus and Cold Front Labs for uh, sponsoring this event. Um, and, and I also want to say that the, uh, um, the, it's been really great to go off and, and to have both of these uh, Drupal shops in the community. They've, they've contributed in a lot of ways beyond uh, just supporting the, uh, th this camp. So, so you know, a good shout out to, to those two organizations and, and happy, to, uh, uh, to, to, you know, happy that they're part of this community. Um, so, I'm Mike Gifford, I'm the president of Open Concept Consulting, which is, a, which is Ottawa's oldest uh, Drupal shop, and we've been, uh, been working with Drupal now for, I think it's close to 12 years. Uh, there's, there's at least one guy here who's, who's been using Drupal longer than, than uh, we have, uh, and that's uh, Omar, and Omar is, is now working with Pantheon, and has worked for a whole stack of other folks. but. Um, one of the things that, that we do at Drupal is, is uh, or with, with um, uh, at Open Concept is, is we, we have, we've, we've specialized in, in doing work with accessibility and security, uh, and to some extent we've done done some work on, on performance as well. Uh, and and uh, I'm the uh, Drupal 8 core uh, accessibility maintainer, and I've been uh, working on uh, accessibility improvements in Drupal since 2008. Um, I'm also the, uh, the founder of Ali Yao, which is Ottawa's Accessibility Unconference, and there's a meetup meet group that uh, people who are here in Ottawa can, can so sign up to, and it's, it's connected to the one in Montreal and Toronto as well, so there's, there's a great accessibility community where you can uh, learn about, uh, about more about accessibility and, and learn some practical, practical issues as you go along. Um, also the author of the Drupal Security Guide, which is a uh, and sort of an overall perspective of how uh, how security is it, how your security infrastructure is set up, and this is a free uh, EPUB and, and uh, PDF that we've produced that is uh, is very much community driven and, and that has uh, insights on how to go off and to configure store your your, uh, your Drupal environment, um, and uh, and also I've written some information on uh, on performance and and blogged on, on how to go off and improve your sustainability and improve the performance of your, your website as well. Uh, so um, I've, I've decided to go off and, and in this, this uh, presentation to, to look at, um, at the uh, um, Shakespeare's Three Witches and, uh, and to do the Scottish play. And uh, it's, it's something that... Uh, that not many people mix uh, mix Shakespeare with with Drupal, but uh, so I figured it was a, a fun a fun way to go off and and to begin. Um, I've also when I was thinking about things like um, security and, and performance and accessibility, these, these are there there seem to be in my head um, some some similarities between these three subjects. And I, you know, um, I also uh, remember from from high school taking Macbeth and. and uh, there's the line, you know, when shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, air, and rain? When the hurly burly is done and the battle's lost and won. You know, great little lines like that that, uh, that sort of sometimes echo to, to web development. Um, and uh, that, that sometimes there's a, there's a bit of a, a battle to try and, and to get the project delivered and to get the client satisfied and to, to meet all the various demands and, and challenges that, that, uh, that are necessary in, in, uh, in implementing a, a web project. Um, but uh, I was also just coming back from uh, from Scotland. I was able to go off into this and spend some time there. And, and uh, so, the, the, uh, the, although I, I do like the veggie haggis in the Scottish gym, uh, that wasn't the reason to go off and to pick the Scottish play for this. Um, but uh, yeah, often you know accessibility, security, and performance are, are overlooked and they're left to the very last minute. And it, it's. I, I think that, that there's so much that, that Drupal shops and, and organizations that, that are developing or that are using Drupal can need to, to think about these three elements differently than they, they traditionally have and, and to try and, and um, not leave the 
the actual implementation to the last minute. So much of the time, it, 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 you know, these are things that that are less are left to the last week, and and we just can't can't sustain that. It's not a, a good process moving forward. Um, and um, I think that that uh, that if we can if we can try and address some of these issues earlier, we can go off and, and uh, hopefully uh, um, address this. So so the three witches are um, you know we have. Actually, just to just to clarify, if anyone, I'll be using pictures of uh, of the the uh, the three witches are in in uh, um, in in all of the slides. So that's all the pictures are, are based on those photos, and I have some quotes in the bottom that are, are part of this as well, um, that are part of one of the the uh, um, one of the, the lines from the three witches. And, and, uh, the one on this this slide is fair is foul and foul is fair hover through the fog in filthy air. Um, I'm trying to go off and intertwine these because I think that, that we can learn a lot from, uh, from, from trying to go off and work on these issues together and trying to, to address them together as opposed to trying to go off and think of these as individual items that, that all have their unique challenges. Um, there's uh, the three rep witches represent darkness, chaos, and conflict. And we can, pri we can try and shed some light on how to go off and deal with those early on in the process to see that we can, we can deal with this better and earlier on. So, double, double, uh, double, sorry, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Um, the the uh, yeah, it, it's 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 inevitable that 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 when projects are are being built, that that at least with how they're built built right now, that people forget about these three issues and uh, they're. Um, you know, you sort of look at it in the last minute, and all the pieces are thrown together, and suddenly um, there's a there's a challenge because it's too slow. You, know, you run an accessibility audit, and the tools, and they're all you know not. You run into some errors that you don't even know how to address and how to go off and overcome, and and you're not sure what kind of, of risks you're exposing the client to because um, the the security component, although you, you may be trying to go off and to use some of the best practices. Um, it's hard to go off and, and monitor and, and build and, and to, to maintain um, the, the discipline throughout the, the process of building the site to make sure that it's, it's set up uh, properly. Um, you can never have a, um, your, your site is, is, is never going to be fast enough, it's never going to be totally secure, and it's, it's never going to be completely accessible. These are, are three things that, that are very common to, to these issues is that, that there's, there, you're, ne it's never, you're never going to get it perfect. These are all things that you need to work on throughout the process and that you're, you're able to, you're going to have to work on um, and, and through regular reviews and regular updates. Um, and, and if you, you know, it's important to look at them through the maintenance or the, the development process, but they're also things that, that need to be tied to the, the ongoing development process as well. Um, so uh, these three, three issues are also ones that are tied to, to a lot of layers of, of technology. Um, people don't think of them this way, but, but all of them have um, touch on, on more than one piece. Like in, in design, you, you can deal with, with uh, you know, your, your CSS, your, your images, and, and uh, information architecture, and, and there's, there's, you're not necessarily dealing with a lot of different technology and different technology platforms, but, but with performance, accessibility, and security, you're always having to deal with, with multiple layers of, of technology. Um, you're also going to find that experts have various different approaches on how to go off and deal with these issues. Um, there's not one agreed to approach to, to make your, your site fast uh, or accessible or secure. So juggling how you, you, you approach experts and how you deal with, with the information that's available is, is, a, is a challenge. Um, and uh, with inevitably, if you're, you know, one of the advantages of using Drupal is that you're, you're able to, to, to crowdsource the wisdom of other people who've gone through and built uh, build these 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 projects. Um, whereas if you're if you're building cu custom code, often you're 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 realizing that the the um, that that the solutions are, are going to be slower. Um, often that they they are often inaccessible and often insecure. There aren't as many people looking at the code. There aren't as many people testing it to see if they can can optimize the MySQL queries. Um, and they're not necessarily as as flexible as you need them to be. Um, and there's there's you know, most most of, a, most of the clients um, that we have are, are people that are, are not necessarily looking at how do we, we re renew our sites on a regular basis to see that, that we're thinking about uh, security performance and, and accessibility and making sure that, that they're 
mo most people assume that the technology is something that's like a, a table or a chair. I mean, once you buy it, it's, it's there, and it's, it's, it's as, as accessible and secure and, and, and uh, I mean, performant as it needs to be. But of course, that isn't the case. There's the, the technology is changing, and, and trying to keep up with the, the evolving environments with which our websites are sitting in uh, so that we can continue to, uh, to see that, that we're, we're able to, to, uh, uh, to keep up with, with the, uh, the, the change of our, our, the, the sites and the environments. Um, so performance is often about um, removing bottlenecks, and accessibility is about eliminating barriers, and often, oftentimes security is about putting up barriers or putting up those, those roadblocks so that, that uh, you have a, a reduced attack vector on your, on your site. And uh, it's, it's uh, um, you know, again, these are things that, that are usually left to the last minute uh, in many projects to deliver because it's not one of the, it's one of the features that's assumed. Um, all of these are, are generally motherhood issues when it comes to, to the web. Our, our, most of our clients assume that, that it's just going to get built in and, and is, is, is part of the cost um, and not necessarily realizing that that they could spend the entire budget on, on one of those aspects and to make sure that it's completely accessible or you know as, as, as fast as it possibly can be. Like all of these things you can spend a huge amount of time trying to go off and, and to, to, to focus on. So I'm going to talk about performance and the, the quote here is fill it to the finny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Um, and uh, it, yeah, performance is a um, an interesting one because um, there's again a lot of layers used in, in, in the, the process. Whether it's it's the uh, if you're using a, a headless uh, implementation or even if you're just using Drupal, there's uh, jQuery UI as, as as part of the process and it's being loaded. There's frameworks there, are, whether it's CSS grids or uh, whatnot. And, and um, you know, I think that that, that people understand that that uh, you, the performance is important. Uh, people understand that that uh, you know nobody likes a slow website, um, and Google's doing a lot of work to try and and uh, to give uh, a higher search engine ranking to faster sites. So that's a, a wonderful thing to be able to see. Um, and uh, we we also have um, you know, we know that that a faster site will have higher user retention, and that you'll have a greater uh, a greater success for for your site if you're able to go off and to get users the information they want. In a timely and organized fashion, um, and uh, you know that being said, that's not the direction that that uh, uh, most sites are, are going. You know, the, the trend still is to bigger and bigger websites with more images and more more bling and and, and richer frameworks, uh, which offer more more possibility for change and, and for, for functionality, but not necessarily a, a light performance experience. Um, and uh, you know, for you know, if, you, if you're in an urban setting and you have access to fast broadband, uh, then then you know you can deal with a, uh, a heavy website. Um, but if you're in in many parts of Canada, uh, you're not actually able to go off into to, to you know having a, a big website is a is a real you know, a real barrier to your, your ability to use it. And uh, there's there's many parts of, of Canada that simply uh, don't have the bandwidth that we've come to to expect in, in, in our major cities. And if you're you're traveling or if you're um, if you're trying to go off and, and to, to build services that are that are accessible to people in uh, northern Ontario or in in uh, you know rural PI, you might want to go off and, and 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 think about what you know what are the, the impacts of, of that. Um, so the average website now is is uh, is larger than the original game of Doom when it first came out. And it's kind of funny that, that a video game of that complexity and that size is now being delivered for every page load that, that uh, you know, on a, on a website. And, you know, of course, when you're loading a website, I mean, it's just that first web page that you need to transfer all of the content, and you don't necessarily transfer all of the content for every subsequent page you're using. At least, hopefully, some of that information will be cached in the browser, or be cached in the, uh, with your per service provider, or for that matter, cache in a CDN, so that, that it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be loaded all the time. Um, but but there are uh, there's still a lot of data that's being transferred on a regular basis, and, and something that um, that often uh, impacts not just how people are um, thinking about you know how the, the the usability of the site, but very much affects the the environment as well. Um, the, you know, there's a, how many people are concerned about the environment and climate change and that kind of stuff? Well, 
as, as big of an issue as, as uh, the global air traffic is, a bigger issue is the data centers around the world. They're growing exponentially, and the, the, the amount of electricity that is, is used to power those data centers is vast, and it keeps, as the more we have our devices on us, and the more internet of things or sensors of things get driven, the more we're storing vast amounts of data on the web, and it's, it's taking, it's costing, us a lot in terms of, of our, our the energy to go off and to drive this this infrastructure, um, but also um, so much of the the data centers are, are are still powered by coal, and if they were at least powered by renewable energy, um, then that would be good. And, and there's you know, there'd be less of an impact if they're all sourced from, from renewable energy. But there's there's uh, there's only if there's even the big players like Google's moving more quickly than most towards renewable uh, energy. Uh, Amazon, their new data center in Canada, is, is based on on uh, what's all powered by uh, by Quebec Hydro, so it's it's reasonably clean as far as, as the the data as the energy source goes. Um, but but it's a um, it, trying to be, sort of be aware of, of the impact of that network and the impact of uh, of this uh, this technology. Like, do we need to be storing this data? Is this something that you know, can we find ways of, of if we know that, that the homepage is going to be loaded by, you know, 100,000 people, if you think about the cumulative number of, of bits that are being transferred from wherever it happens to be hosting to, to, uh, to, to people's laptops around the world, that's, that has a huge amount of energy consumption. And if we can, can reduce that and take responsibility as web developers to try and find ways to uh, reduce our impact. Uh, not only are we going to have happier customers because the sites are going to load faster, but we're also going to be able to to um, take some measure of responsibility for reducing our, our, our potential impact on, on the planet. And, and that's you know something that that we all have responsibility for. Um, so as I mentioned before, there's there's uh, um, you know Google's looking at at, uh, at the the uh, performance and and uh, and looking at the. Um, the mobility of, uh, or how, how well your, your website loads and, and how a lot of these sort of metrics are, are now being tied up and, and being monitored by Google as well. Um, so if you, um, how many people here use the, uh, the Google, uh, sorry, the, the Chrome, um, uh, the developer tools in Chrome to go off and, and the inspector tools? So you'll notice now that there's, there's under the auto to report function, there's the ability to look at the, the lighthouse and get a, an accessibility audit and a performance audit of your website already built into the, uh, the Chrome tools. So you, can, you can have a sense of, of where some of the bottlenecks are and where some of the obvious accessibility problems are um, through some automated tests that Google is providing in their, their development suite. And you can, you know, if Google's building this into their, you know, their browser, they're expecting you to use it and um, expecting you to go off and to evaluate it. So I think that, that um, that we're there's a, a uh, you know in terms of trying to develop for our clients um, having sites that are uh, Google's aware of these three issues and, and, and is penalizing people for for not looking at these things uh, effectively. So accessibility. Um, I have meat to toe of frog, wool of bat, and tongue of dog. You know Shakespeare had some some funny ways of expressing things. Um, there's definitely seats over here and uh, on this side. So, accessibility is very much uh, dependent on the the, uh, uh, the design and the frameworks that are used, and uh, and, and it's 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 also something that is dependent on the the browser and the operating system and the assistive technology that's that's being used. It's not something that is is a um, there's lots of different ways that people exist online and, and, and different abilities that they have uh, that they uh, they can interact with online and. Uh, trying to go off and, and build an accessible website is partly to try and, and to to think about how other people are engaging with your site and engaging with the, the information that you're um, you're trying to present. Um, and and there's a bunch of people who are probably at uh, Everett Zufeld's talk this morning. Um, it was great to sort of highlight the the uh, the impact on, of people who are, are both keyboard only users and also the uh, the blind users, and, and those are, are significant. Like the, the keyboard-only user population is quite a bit higher than the blind user population, um, but accessibility is a lot deeper than that. And, and one of the populations that I think um, everyone is is uh, is looking about at some level is, is the baby boomer population. 
And um, accessibility is going to affect them more and more because as we grow older, our abilities degrade over time. Um, our eyesight is not going to be as good as it was when we were 20. Our ability to go off and to, to manage fine motor control isn't likely to be as good. Um, same with our ability to deal with, with page navigation and, and basic comprehension of, of the information architecture. All of these things are things that, that, that slowly begin to degrade over time. And um, I think that, that there's no organization in the world that I know of that's willing to simply just write off the baby boomer population. Um, they've got too much political and economic clout. And also, when was the last time the baby boomers were denied anything? So it's, a, it's something that, uh, you know, like legally and politically, there's a, a lot that, that, uh, that they are, are, are able to go off into muscle. And, and I think it's, it's really something that, that, you know, that most organizations need to be, be thinking of. Um, and uh, and it's, it's uh, yeah, there's, there's a trying to go off and understand how people interact with the web and the different ways that people are able to overcome uh, their information. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee was, was very, um, you know, when he was, was crafting the web, sort of saw this, this, this um, technology as something that could really help to, to be a, a platform that, that leveled the playing field and allowed everyone to be able to engage and interact with each other. And that's a, a really, you know, useful goal and, and, and vision of, of how the, the, the web should be uh, constructed, but it's it's um, it's something that we've sort of forgotten because the the web has has as it has matured has, has sort of chased the, the latest shiny flashy thing, and there's been a, a drive towards towards the bling, and and not necessarily that much attention paid to how do we actually um, make sure that the the content that we're creating is is something that will be available to the broadest number of people as possible. Um, so uh, the the other thing about, about um, uh, accessibility is that there's a legal, uh, legal component to this as well. Um, in Ontario, there's the AODA. Has anyone, has everyone heard of the AODA? The, the Access for Ontarians with Disability Act. Um, so this is a, a really uh, interesting set of progressive legislation that is, is not just affecting governments uh, and those institutions, but is also uh, affecting any business that's, that's dealing with people over it's over you know 25 employees. There's there's implications for for a range of, of different different people. And there's there's legal implications to to uh, uh, to not uh, addressing this and, and to to looking at your your website both as a, a uh, you know consumer or as a producer of content, um, but also as a uh, as somebody that, that is hiring staff and, and, and accommodating your own your own staff. Um, how many people here have American clients? So the the, uh, the U.S. has a has a whole other uh, bailiwick of of, uh, of legislation, as do people in the U.K. and, and uh, um, France. Uh, but but the uh, in the U.S. Section 508 is a um, an interesting set of legislation that has gone through a revision, and um, the both the Americans with the Disability Act and this and Section 508 have have recently adopted the international standard of WCAG. You know, 2.0 AA as the standard, and if you are uh, an organization that is um, that has a website that is not a um, a private club or a church, you you could very well be sued because your website is not uh, is not meeting those basic accessibility guidelines, um, and that's something that most clients are not aware of, and and something that that. Uh, uh, there's an increasing number of, of organizations that have been um, sued because of, of uh, their inaccessibility or accessibility challenges with their website in the U.S. That, fortunately, that, that litigious uh, approach hasn't hasn't affected hasn't come up to Canada. Um, but uh, the the uh, um, the Canadians with the Disability Act is probably going to be announced in, next year, and it'll be interesting to see what the um, the responsibilities and the, and the enforcement techniques within the Canadians with the Disability Act are, are going to be here in, in Canada. Um, so uh, security has, has, uh, has some uh, similar risks. So the quote here is, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard leg and howlet's wing. Sometimes like, you know, you get into the grunge of, of a, a development project and it does really feel like this kind of feeling like, yeah. Just as you know, often technology is not as clean and 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 and, uh, and easy and simple and straightforward as we'd like it to be. And, and uh, I, I like the the magic elements and and, and uh, illusions to uh, to these these uh, 
dark, uh, dark, mysterious powers from uh, from the, the three witches here. Uh, but yeah, you, you can definitely have uh, legal implications for for not securing your website as well. Um, and, uh, and so many people out there think that they're they're not going to be a target of a um, of something. They, there's there's nothing that they have to hide. They've got a website. They're not particularly concerned about access about security because really it's it's, uh, it's you know they 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 have nothing to hide and nobody's targeting them. But what most people don't realize is that everyone on the internet is a target. If you um, there's a bot out there which is 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 looking for for people to, and servers to compromise and for for new uh, new marks to be able to to pick out and and to to uh, to exploit. And if you are you're, you if you're not concerned about your users and their privacy and uh, the the ability to go off and to to use your your database and your site as a way of, of spear phishing individual uh, users, this is something that will come back to to haunt you over time, and uh, and very much there's a um, legal implica legal implications to not securing your infrastructure, not doing due diligence to to see that your uh, your information isn't uh, yeah that you're you're securely managing it. And it's certainly one thing if you're you're it's more serious if you have credit cards online, um, but it's also a big issue if you have um, have other um, communities of, of, uh, of, uh, of people that, that you're, if you have a lot of people who are logging in and setting up accounts and, and are storing personal, personally identifiable information on the, on the site. Um, how many here people, how many people know about OWASP? So it's a, it's a uh, security, um, it's the, the Open Web Application Security Project. Um, it's a, a, a great community of people that are, are looking at, at both Highlighting uh, big ex big security problems in uh, in the the web world, uh, but also putting forward uh, ideas and suggestions for uh, for addressing that. Uh, and uh, it's it's a definitely a good place to learn from that. Um, and um, you know, so many organizations tend to to forget even the basics of security. And, and one of them that I keep reminding people is just you know. You know, update your site early and often. Don't wait too long, and uh, make sure that you've got. Um, if you uh, if you're setting up a website, trying to make sure that, that you are not uh, not waiting until the uh, you know uh, you should be, be applying the updates within a day or two of, of the release, and then some issues you should be, be updating them within hours. Um, people know about the Drupal Geddon attack that uh, that took place was it two years ago now, um, something like that, and. Um, you know, within Drupal Geddon, there were after the the uh, the release of uh, of the, the the patches, there were bots developed to try and search out uh, problems with with websites. And within I think it was seven hours of the the uh, security announcement being formally released, there were um, automated bots that were crawling the web looking for Drupal websites and trying to to take advantage of this exploit. And it's not just about trying to go off and, and um, take advantage of, of one website and being able to modify the, um, the, the code base or the theme or to hack it, uh, the, the, the look of a website. With Drupal, Drupal Geddon and, and similar hacks, you could, you could take, um, take over the whole operating system and the database and do some significant damage, not just on, the, uh, on, on trying to go off and, and to, to, um, uh, to pull information down from, from uh, your, web, your website, but, but actually being able to establish control of that website and, and make sure that you're able to, on an ongoing basis, pull information about the users and about the data that's being transferred and, and to monitor that. I and mean, that, that's the, it's much more dangerous to go off and to have, um, have a bot actively sitting on your server than it is to, uh, to have somebody do a one-time one you know, drag and drop of, of your, your user data. Because uh, if they're you know, actively watching and monitoring and, and, and exploiting your website over time, um, just in the background, uh, they can get so much more information simply by, by being there. Um, so we've got a, a free security guide that, uh, that's available on our website, and um, we went and, and wrote this this guide because uh, because we were hired by CSIS to go off and to deal with uh, uh, an issue with their their site when their web their 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 um, recruitment website was hacked by a uh, um, by a Viagra scammer, and uh, it was a rather embarrassing thing for for uh, you know, Canada's top spy agency to be hacked by a Viagra scammer, um, and which is you know it was but it was a very public thing as well. So there was no NDAs that were required, and I was able to go off into to write some documentation and release this documentation to try and, and help help other uh, organizations deal with 
with understanding the complexity of, of, uh, of securing your whole server environment and to, to understand and also to be able to, to talk to management about how important it is to, to address these issues early. Um, so much of these so many of these problems are things that that technical people understand, but management isn't necessarily going to prioritize. So how do we try and take these, these ideas and make sure that the people who, who are actually controlling the budgets are able to, to, uh, to understand and, and to, to, uh, to value? Um, so let's get back to some specifics. Um, so the quote here is, for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell broth of oil and bubble. Um, so, with Drupal 8, you've got uh, some some great advantages with uh, with, it, with performance. Um, it is slower directly if you compare with Drupal 7, loading the same content. But there's a bunch of stuff that's being built into to Drupal 8, which means that for um, if it's configured right and it's setting up in the same uh, the same server, it can scale much better and do do much better overall than Drupal 7 can because of the infrastructure investment that's being that's being done by the the uh, the Drupal core community. Um, so one of the elements is that JavaScript is running on the footer. So again, this is stuff that, that happens and, and you're able to, uh, by default, set up websites so that, that uh, um, your, your initial page load isn't going to be, be waiting until after the JavaScript downloads. Um, there's the image cache module that, uh, that is, is built into core in both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Uh, and, and if that's set up properly, you're able to go off and just sit and make some uh, sensible uh, presets for, for image processing to try and, and you know, reduce the size of the images that you're, you're managing. Um, in Drupal 8, we've replaced a number of, of uh, PNG files uh, and GIFs with uh, SVG files. Uh, and you know, that's, that's useful as well to try and, and uh, both deal with the uh, mobile implementations and, and to, for that matter, you know, Drupal's being used to, to deliver so much these days and, and uh, to have, uh, you know, having it on, on uh, having Drupal websites deliver uh, either, you know, ticket, ta uh, ticket things or, or like, it, it's, 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 it's used for a lot of, a lot of information. So it's not, an, uh, in, in, you know, yeah, it's, it's not something you can assume is going to be sitting on a, on a desktop or laptop device. Um, so there's a lot of improvements that have happened with caching in Drupal 8. Uh, and, uh, and that's 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 huge that the, the caching engine is being rewritten uh, to see that that there you know by default the uh, the page caching is is uh, is managed better. Um, there's default support for PHP 7, um, which again Drupal has has tried to go off and to help push the, the PHP community and to push adoption of uh, better versions of PHP uh, instead of supporting the old legacy uh, um, the old legacy PHP versions. Um, and Drupal's really trying to, to take a leadership role in, in getting people to adopt the, the latest version um, so that we can, can deal with, with more modern implementations of PHP and, and, and to, to, to have, again, faster, uh, more secure code because of that. Um, after Drupal 8.1, uh, BigPipe was, uh, was implemented. And uh, does everyone know what BigPipe is? So BigPipe is, is um, basically how Facebook pioneered how, how web uh, content is being delivered. So instead of having to, uh, you know, instead of loading a new page and, and relying on page caching, um, it, you know, the the um, uh, Drupal or through BigPipe is now able to go off and send pagelets or little components of the of pages to your browser. And so instead of sending um, all of the page content and having that be be loaded on, on demand, you can just send specific pagelets that that allow your 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 website to to more quickly load because you're not having to refresh everything. You only have to, to modify the pages that change as you jump between pages. And uh, that's that's certainly a, a huge advantage as well. Um, there's also better support for HTTP2. Um, so, and, and you know, HTTP2 has, has a, uh, a server push functionality that makes sure that your style sheets and JavaScripts and other elements are able to be be all sent at once in a proactive manner instead of being um, queued up and and you know sent in separate requ requests. So it's a it's a much more forward thinking way of, of delivering pages. Um, how many people here have jumped over to HTTP two for for you know some of their sites? No. 
Okay. It's, there's, there's definitely some advantages to that. Um, also, on, on performance, uh, the, the, um, uh, there's great use of, of modules like the fences module and display suite. Um, if you're, when you're doing your development, you're actually doing um, the, your theming. Um, if you can eliminate any code and, and uh, that doesn't need to be presented, if you can simplify your, your HTML um, while you're doing the development and before you actually do the heavy theming of the site, um, you can you can again the, the more the less HTML you need to send across to to the browser the more performant it's going to be. So thinking about that process in the development and the longer it takes you to go off and to, to do that, like if you you've waited till after the launch of your website to go in and to, to to look at performance, you're going to need to then go through and, and look at all of your your uh, JavaScript and CSS and and, uh, and and verify that that all works. So again, the earlier that can be done in the process, the, the easier it's going to be for for the the maintenance. And we know our clients are going to want this, and we know our clients are going to want to have fast websites. So how do we build that into the process to see that we're actually able to pay for the development of that additional time to see that it's done properly? Um, the lazy loader module is also available in, in, uh, in Drupal 8, the, the image lazy loader module, which just basically means that the images can be loaded after, like the images on the bottom of the page can be loaded afterwards or only when the page is refreshed. So again, it's a good way to try and reduce the number of bits that are, are, are being sent for the browser, or at the very least to be able to reduce the number of bits that are being sent um, early on so that, that you're able to um, you know, get the information as quickly as possible to the, the client. Um, and uh, another thing that's, that's always important in, in websites is to uh, disable any modules that are, that are not being used. And, and that's something that is, is often forgot. Uh, you know, the number of websites out there that, that are in production and still have development on them, um, or for that matter, if, you're, if your site isn't being actively, uh, you know, if you're not actually working with views regularly, you, know, you, you can disable the views UI interface. And the less code that's running, um, the faster your website is going to, to load and also the more secure it's going to be. Uh, so uh, D8 accessibility, this is the, the piece that I, I know the most about since, since I've been pushing Drupal 8 accessibility since 2008. Um, the quote here is, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. So uh, some great things we've added in Drupal 8. Um, we, we couldn't add um, area, WAI, WAI area in, in Drupal 7. It was a little bit too early. There's some pieces where we were able to add that level of, of uh, where we had to add it, even though the, the area standard was not finalized. Um, so in Drupal 7, there's, there's a couple instances where we do have area, um, but we tried to, to really avoid that because of, of, of problems with the, the implementation, uh, or with, because the standard was still being developed and, and changed. Um, but uh, in Drupal 8, it was, was a, a, a fixed uh, recommendation. We were able to, to implement that. Uh, likewise, HTML5 was was uh, was solidified at that point, and we were able to to bring in a bunch of, of uh, you know, native elements from HTML5 to be able to to address that. And you know, HTML5 has the advantage of exposing a lot of other semantics. So information about the the um, the web can be be exposed and and leveraged uh, going ahead. So whether it's the the footer element and making sure that your page is it's, it's clear to everyone what is the information that's in the footer of your web page versus your header, versus the navigation, versus the main content. All that stru stuff is structurally set up. Uh, whether you're dealing with an article, whether you're dealing with, with a, um, with a, you know, it, it, there's more options to go off and to, to, to express that semantics. And, and it's, uh, it's really helped uh, with, with uh, not just the, uh, the dealing with, with uh, people are using assistive technology to navigate your website, but um, also people who are, are using um, you know, other technologies to access your website. The, the semantics that we built into to Drupal 8 will help you with your mobile uh, presentation. It will help with the, um, if you're trying to go off and do voice uh, integration, that will help with that as well. Um, it'll help with, with accessing uh, bots. If you're, you're trying to go off and integrate uh, you know, a, an AI information, having that, that a, you know, additional um, semantics built into core and, and, and having structured content will help you present better content to, to everyone. Um, we've also in Drupal 8 made a lot of improvements to color contrast, to low vision. Uh, we've, we've added pieces of the, um, of the uh, WC3's ATAG, or the, the Authoring Tool Accessibility Guideline. Um, and this is this is ATAG is I'll be presenting on tomorrow morning, um, and it's a, an, an area that's that's often overlooked because you know people think about 
uh, people don't tend to think about what happens when, when content authors start adding content. But generally what happens when, when as a web shop we, we hand over a nice shiny CMS to a client, the client starts adding content and even if we had a, gave them a perfectly accessible website beforehand, as soon as they start adding content, the accessibility goes down because they haven't trained the, the, uh, the content authors to be able to produce content that meets the, the very technical WK standards. So if you can build in logic into your, your uh, CMS to be able to have guide people and provide the training wheels that users can, can have to help direct their, their content, produce better content, then, um, then you're going to be much better off um, in terms of accessibility. Uh, one of the things we've done for this is, is to require alt tags on, on images. So in between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, you're going to get a prompt if you try and upload an image through the user interface and don't have alt text on it. And you're going to have to either fill in that alt text or, you know, or disable that alt text in order to go off and, and to, to add that image. And that's something that, that is, is, we haven't done any tests on this to evaluate this, but I'm confident that just having that prompt will, will ensure that, that Drupal websites are, are, are going to be more, more accessible in their content simply because users have been prompted to enter the content. Um, and and there's, there's a lot more that can be done in this, but, but we've, we've uh, started down the road of, of, of building in uh, these, these improvements to the authoring experience. Um, there's, uh, there's also um, <coughs> improvements we've made to the uh, table infrastructure. So um, in, in uh, Drupal, there's a lot of tables, and both on the admin side, uh, but also with views. Views is, is, is such a powerful query engine, but a lot of times you're producing tables at the end and um, there's now the option to provide uh, summary and caption information so that, that you can describe the table that's being used and get a real sense of what are the, um, what are the elements that, that uh, as, a, as a, a blind user, what would you need to find out? What, what is this table trying to express and how do you, how do you address that? Um, there's also uh, inline form errors, uh, which are, are, have now become part of um, it's no longer an experimental module. It will be, be you know, included as, uh, in, in the default of core. It's not going to be enabled by default, but it's something that's available in core right now um, and in the next release. Um, and uh, if you're looking at uh, doing uh, Drupal development uh, and developing your, your website, I do recommend that people look at tools like the Wave Toolbar and Tenon. They're, they're great tools to provide a visual, a visual sense of how accessible your website is. And these tools are automated tools that will only probably grab about 20% of the accessibility issues. But it's really important to at least make sure you've got those automated tools in place to be able to, to deal with those. Don't worry about testing with screen readers uh, just yet. Usually people, developers, it takes a long time to be able to, 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 to understand how a blind user uses a screen reader. It takes no time to go off and understand that the red icons with the Wave toolbar are bad and that you can deal, we can, you can fix those with some simple, simple changes to your, your uh, uh, HTML. Um, and uh, there's also, I wanted to mention that uh, Aaron Marchak and David McDonald are doing a great talk on WK 2.1. Um, accessibility is a moving target. The, the guidelines are changing. The web of uh, you know, WK 2.0 was, was written or was released in, I think it was 2008. So a lot has changed on the web on that time and, and these guidelines are being updated and, and the, the expectations of, of the, the um, um, of web developers keep up with those, those accessibility guidelines is, uh, is we're going to have to learn this as well. So this is changes that are, are part of it. Um, so um, security is also a uh, important thing to try and, and keep, keep updating and, and uh, um, in, in terms of Drupal 8, um, we've got uh, you know Twig now, so we're no longer having to, to deal with PHP template, and the the it's, it's so much harder now to go off and to uh, to have a, a designer go off and, and throw massive PHP menu structures and, and giant PHP code in your template because there's that further se segmentation of of the design and the the, the logic of the, the site. So um, that's that's been a big uh, push for for improved security uh, in the Drupal community. Um, and uh, the there's now a in Drupal 8 a, a public file uh, public file base URL. So there's there's a, a limit to the number of, of uh, uh, file upload attacks. There's a trusted host pattern. Um, we've removed PHP filter. PHP filter was fun, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit too dangerous, and 
and certainly the, the possibility of exploiting uh, code. Like if you've ever had to deal with a with a website that has been compromised and had PHP filter enabled, it's like, where are the problems? They could be anywhere. It's like ah, it's, it's a it's a real uh, nightmare when when you do run into to, to problems. Um, we've also got YAML files, which are, are great to, to sort of hard code your uh, your configuration, uh, which again makes it harder to to uh, to hack when there's changes in the the, uh, the code base. Um, so that's that's uh, you know you can you can take your code base and your configuration and you can put that into to Git and and make sure that there's that that's managed separately from what you can access through the user interface. Um, there's a hardening of user session handling. Automated CSRF token uh, protection. There's uh, we've we've stripped out the domains out of the, the uh, out of cookie domains so that the www dot is stripped and that that again helps with security. Um, there's improvements to MySQL uh, and uh, some click jacking protection and some JavaScript uh, API improvements as well. Um, but uh, in terms of recommendations for people who are using Drupal 8, I uh, definitely recommend that people use the, the coder module to, to do a review of your, uh, your site's, uh, uh, you know, any custom code you've done, and if there's any modules you haven't reviewed with, with coder, it's, it's useful to go off and see if there's any, anything that's not being developed for the, um, the, the, the Drupal best practices and, and anything that's, that's out of scope with that. Um, and if there's any, um, you know, coder, the coder module can look for things like the SQL injection attacks and, and identify those. Um, there's also great modules like the security review module um, that isn't formally released in 8, but there's a um, there's available a version available in in, uh, in Git that you can use. Again, don't use this on your production website. You know these are tools that you want to use in develop in, on your development site, and something that's at least behind a. Um, a password uh, so that people can't, on the internet can't go off and hack it. It's uh, it's, it's definitely um, you know, a point of vulnerability again in terms of, of security. If you if you're the, if you're developing a website uh, out in the open and don't have any and you're not applying security releases while you're doing the development of the website, that site could be hacked in between when it's being developed and when it's launched. So if it's sitting on the internet, it needs to be updated and it needs to be updated regularly. Um, and uh, another two modules that are worth looking at, the site audit module and the hacked module. Um, I do like the hacked module because it uh, it does show you when there's, when there's changes in, in the code base and, and uh, um, if the modules that are released have any sort of variations. And it may just be that there's a patch that you've applied that hasn't been brought into core, but it's useful to review that and make sure that, that everything in your, your code base is aligning with that central repository of, of information on, on, uh, on Drupal.org. And that, that commitment to that central code base is a really important part of, of making sure that your site is secure. Um, and uh, yeah, disable unused modules. It's good for performance. It's also really important for security. Um, so cool it with a, a baboon's blood and then charm is firm and, and then the charm is firm and good. Uh, timelines. So there's, uh, you know, the earlier you can look at performance issues in your development cycle, the more you can do testing um, to see um, what is your benchmark um, at each release so that, that if you've added a new module or added new functionality that you can compare the, the performance with the, uh, the last release and the current one, that will certainly help. Um, if you can uh, spend time going off and, and properly setting up your environment, um, it's, it's one thing to go off and to, to assume that that big pipe is, is, is something you're going to be able to turn on in the end and be able to run with. But it could be that there's some conflict in a module that you're you're uh, de you're, you're using that that may interfere with big pipes. So again, if you're developing with it and, and are doing the testing um, with uh, you know, with these modules to make sure that they are going to be performant, you're not going to be surprised at the end, and uh, um, you're able to go off and, and and to more quickly react to to uh, uh, you know issues when they come up. Um, and uh, you definitely you know when you're dealing with with performance issues, so much of the time it comes down to caching, and uh, that, that's a real annoyance for, for developers. Uh, it's just dealing with which is the error, where is this, this content cached, and has this problem really been fixed, and how do we make sure that that the the site is is properly being the cache is being cleared properly and managed properly. Um, so, uh, with accessibility, um, the the uh, you know, making sure that your developers and designers are using automated tools to uh, to check for common accessibility problems and, and have that really early is, is, is very important. Um, there are tools now that are, are that have 
being developed and are being improved to go off and, and to, to, to do automated checks. Um, so Axe Core is one that DQ has, has put out that, uh, um, that is released on GitHub and that's a, a good open model to go off and to build on. And that's the, the engine that the uh, Google's Lighthouse project is, is using. So again, that's getting some, some good support from, from the Google community. So it's at least a simple one to start with, with in terms of, of uh, um, automated testing. Um, but you can also look at, at um, um, you know, in terms of accessibility, you, you can go back as early as the wireframing uh, to, to help, uh, or even before that actually, but, but certainly you can look at accessibility in the wireframing framing process. And uh, Aiden Turney um, has, has presented a number of times on how, how they are using accessibility in their wireframing process to alert designers and developers about one of the, some of the problems and some of the, the things that, the functionality that, that is expected and how to, to, to how a, um, how, what are the things to look out for when you're, you're developing uh, a site um, and uh, to make sure that, that it's not a sort of an aha at the end of the project, that it's something that is, is caught as early as possible because it, it's so expensive. The later you, you wait to fix an accessibility problem, the more expensive it becomes. Um, and uh, we've also built a lot of accessibility best practices into Drupal and uh, the more your team can learn about those and, and try and address them uh, into your building, your, your software development process, the better it is. Uh, one of the easy ones is, uh, is dealing with CSS Display None. Um, we have a centralized process for dealing with CSS Display None uh, to making sure that content is visible, invisible, or visible on focus. Um, and if you, if you stick with the Drupal standard for this, then you're going to be able to, to update that more easily in a central location when, whenever the, the, uh, the, the assistive technology in the browsers decide to go off and, and change how they're supporting that. Um, the, the other thing that, that we've added in Drupal 8 is uh, the uh, tabbing manager to make sure that you can control your workflow and tabbing, uh, and also having a um, uh, Drupal announce, which is a JavaScript engine to try and help with area, uh, to see that there's a central way to manage area implementations and to, to control that through JavaScript. Um, and security, um, you know, you make sure that you've got some, some automated testing on your, the modules of the custom code that you're looking at, um, making sure that your developers are, uh, are developing to the coding standards. And uh, it's also, you know, when you're choosing your modules, try and look to see that you're choosing modules that are supporting, supported by the Drupal security team. Um, there's a lot of modules now that, that are not officially not, not putting out secure releases that have not been, you can opt out of, of that uh, secure, security monitoring by the security team at the moment. And uh, so, so make sure that when you're choosing your modules, you're looking at that and to see that you're uh, trying to, to see that you're, you're uh, um, keeping up again with, with, the, the, uh, um, with modules that are going to be supported for security going ahead. Um, so running out of time here. So in terms of best practices, you know, I, I think that it's, it's useful to go off and to start with Drupal, to leverage Drupal's APIs, to, to start with the core themes. Um, if, you're, if you're theming a website, you can now go off and, and use Classy um, or Standard as your, uh, you, uh, as your base theme, uh, but also the Zen and Adaptive theme are, are good, good themes to, to look at because they have been so tested for, particularly for, for uh, accessibility, but also for security and performance. Um, I would recommend that people don't go with Headless just yet, not because it uh, can't be done, but because you, it's a whole other community and a whole other set of information, and Headless Drupal is just, at the moment, Headless approaches generally strip out all of the work that's being done to improve the HTML and the semantics of, of, uh, of Drupal. And it's, uh, I don't know yet of a, of a good uh, pattern for going off and addressing uh, accessibility in, in a headless implementation. Um, using automated tools is useful, but also doing keyboard-only testing. Um, you can do a lot to try and, and, and find accessibility problems simply by tabbing through the website. And so many times you're going to find that the menu doesn't work for keyboard-only users, you, or the, you can't get to certain pieces of the website, or you don't know where you are because they haven't brought a focus element in to see that, that, that there's some visual indication uh, of where you are, whether the designer has gone off and used outline colon zero or uh, has, has, has simply you know, styled it out. Um, but you know, trying to make sure that, the, that a keyboard-only implementation has as much or more implementation or more um, representation visually than, than a, mouse, a mouse would have. Um, and, and in terms of security, 
um, start with a secure server environment and you know make sure that you're keeping your site up to date and and making sure that you're only managing the code that you you need to manage. Um, code is debt, and uh, if you have a lot of custom code, that's a lot of cust of, of debt that you're having to, to maintain. If you're able to leverage the Drupal community, there's a less you have a lower responsibility for for once you've selected good, well-maintained modules that have a good community of people behind them and you're participating in the issue queues for the modules that you use to try and make sure that you've got uh, more robust and, and more feature-rich rich applications, you're gonna be better set for, uh, for having a module be, be maintained by, by the community. Um, and uh, you know, again, the separation of, of uh, uh, presentation from code is quite important and we've accomplished quite a lot of that through Twig as well. Uh, and what else? Um, so this is Joey's kitten, uh, and uh, and uh, I got to say that the uh, you know there's there's an element uh, in, in the Drupal community to talk about free as in in, in beer or free as in speech. I like to think about it as, as free as in kittens, and so um, you can you can be given. A, a wonderful kitten, but if you don't feed it and take care of it and play with it, then it will go off and rip apart your furniture and you know, wake, you know, tear out your eyes and maybe it'll starve to death or maybe it'll eat your goldfish. But it's a, you know, you need to, you think about free as in kittens and find ways to nurture that community and uh, certainly by, you know, contributing to the community, coming out to events like this, uh, contributing code back to the community. Um, I was really hoping that Alex Benet this morning was going to be, be talking about a, a shared first approach and, and, and uh, the idea that the U.S. government has, has tried to, to, to implement in terms of code.gov and how do we try and make sure that we're, we're contributing, the government is contributing back on, on these issues. And uh, we didn't quite get there today, but hopefully that'll be something that they'll, they'll be able to embrace fully, um, like the, the, uh, the 18F community and others, like the uh, GDS uh, team in the UK have done. So, um, and uh, with that, um, thanks again to our diamond and platinum sponsors. And if there's any questions, please let me know. No questions? I, I do have Excellent. You said, you said you're like to avoid that list, right? You're yeah. Like a couple. Uh, you said that you don't have yet like a solution for this, but is there any solution for this at all? I think there, there are um, approaches to developing um, uh, React and Angular to be accessible. And there are, there, it can be done. Um, but it's, it comes down to ensuring that like, what are the defaults and what does your community need to do to, what is the, the, the Angular and JavaScript community's defaults to see that, that they are using the proper semantic uh, HTML involved in, in, in their... So it's a change on their side, not on the Drupal side, right? It's a change on their side. So it's, it's trying to, to say what is their community doing to try and make sure that their site is being developed towards best practices as opposed to what so many JavaScript people do, which is Let's go off and, and what they tend to do is, is, is take divs and then apply area to the divs and just style up the divs. And it's like, well, that's not a good approach. The first rule of area is don't use area. You know, you only use area if you need to use area. If you can't do with HTML, then use area. But so much of, of, uh, of the accessibility can be done with, 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 uh, with or so much of the semantics can be done with, with HTML. So don't area before you know, early on in the process. So any other questions? Yeah. Yep. You said about uh, automated tools to validate your accessibility. Mm -hmm. Would it make it make no sense to verify the site? Do you have any sites on how to log them? Requirement to be all these sites and then look for accessibility to move for meeting or not and how open storage Right. I, I wish the government was using good approaches and was contributing back to them. They're mostly they're 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 buying on to commercial services to do automated audits and and catching them catching the problems after the fact. So the government is not yet a good example of how to do this. Anyways, thank you very much.